right, so hi everyone. Um, so this project arose out of several ongoing programs of research at the University of Minnesota um, Department of Anthropology. Um, and we've been utilizing multiple types of 3D acquisition um, and production methods in our labs, including photogrammetry, structured light scanning, and uh, next engine laser scanning, among other things. Um, so I'm sure as everyone in this room knows, 3D representations can be useful for all sorts of things. Uh, this includes sharing data, using models for teaching, uh, and other types of analytical techniques, including vector analysis and geometric morphometrics. Yet, there is an issue when it comes to developing 3D or to creating 3D models of things such as obsidian artifacts. Uh, the problem, of course, is that obsidian has several properties that makes it ha hard to capture in 3D, namely its transparency and glossy surface. However, obsidian can make up a large portion of archaeological assemblages. So far, uh, Unless we figure out a solution to this obsidian scanning problem, there is a potential to miss out on all these new and exciting applications associated with 3D modeling. This is also a problem, of course, for other types of material culture with similar properties, uh, such as non-volcanic glass. Um, so based on our expertise, instead of developing or trying to invent any sort of new imaging techniques, we decided that the most logical way forward was to look at different coatings we could apply to our objects to aid the scanning process. Coding objects for 3D scanning is already a fairly common practice, um, although perhaps less so for sensitive archaeological objects. So for this project, we decided to focus on using photogrammetry and structured light scanning. Uh, we chose not to test these various coatings with laser scanning, uh, since we found that in general, in terms of model quality and accuracy, uh, the results we're able to achieve, for example, with our next engine laser scanners just aren't on par um, with what is produced via photogrammetry or structured light. Um, in addition to photogrammetry and structured lights, uh, we also experimented with some other imaging techniques, uh, namely RTI, but I'll get to that uh, a little bit later in the talk. Um, so our methodology was fairly straightforward. To start out with, we create a large number of scans of the same experimental obsidian flake, which you can see there on the left. Uh, and we did this using a suite of different coatings, testing both photogrammetry and structured light scanning. Uh, next, we used these initial results to em eliminate any combinations of coatings and scanning techniques that looked like they would not produce high quality models. Um, we then tested the remaining coding scanning combinations on three more experimental obsidian <laughs> artifacts of different morphologies. Um, and these included a thin, very transparent blade, uh, a small unidirectional core, and um, an experimental, also all of these are experimental, uh, projectile point. Um, so we chose to focus on qualitative aspects uh, to effect, evaluate the effectiveness of these different coatings. Uh, this included whether we could get any recognizable scanning results at all. Uh, next, we looked for gross visual accuracy of the model's surface. Um, in other words, was it smooth like an obsidian flake or was it bumpy and noisy? Um, and then finally, we looked to see if we could see fine details that lithic analysts like, uh, such as ripples, uh, lancets, and retouch to see if those were also captured accurately. So we originally started with five different coatings, um, which were all designed specifically uh, to be removable, perhaps with the uh, uh, exception of our last coating. So first of all is talc dust. Um, we initially used this uh, pen, which came with our next engine scanner. Um, so you kind of click it and talc comes out. Um, uh, but it was a little difficult to get an even coating everywhere with this, so we ended up just switching and experimenting um, and just using a makeup brush and um, some baby powder from the drugstore. Um, uh, next, we used what is called a developer spray. So this is normally used sort of in industrial mechanical purposes, uh, for example, to check the quality of welds, to look for dents on the sides of cars. Um, and it leaves sort of an even, thin coating of fine talc particles on the surface. Um, next, we tested out chalk spray. Uh, so this is used in 3D scanning sometimes, um, specifically 
Uh, the stuff that we use is kind of meant if you're, you know, writing a picnic is this way on the grass, you know, putting something on the sidewalk temporarily, uh, et cetera. Um, so for both of these, developer and chalk spray, we used both a light and heavy application in our initial round of tests. Uh, next, we used dulling spray, which is used, for example, on film sets. If there's a shiny surface and they don't want it to be distracting in the movie, they'll spray this on it, do their filming, and then be able uh, to wipe it off. Um, finally, we tested out medicated foot powder spray. Um, which was suggested by an anonymous peer reviewer on an article, so we figured, why not? We'll try it, we'll see if it works. Um, so this is what these coatings look like applied to our initial test flake. Um, these are pictures that we used for the structure from motion uh, reconstructions. Uh, as you can see, um, the developer and chalk sprays pretty much turn the object white, um, and for both of these sprays, a heavier application was needed to cover the entire surface of the flake completely to totally get rid of shine. Um, with the talc dust, which here we applied using the little Next Engine um, talc pen, a significant amount of the flake surface remained uncoated. This was less of a problem um, with the makeup brush uh, baby powder technique. Um, and then on the right, you can see the dulling spray and the foot spray sort of results in something in between, so a little less shiny, um, more grayish, with some of the surface features uh, still showing through. So in terms of our protocols, um, for structured light scanning, we used a David SLS2 scanner uh, with a turntable. Uh, we collected one rotations of scans at 15 degree increments. Uh, we then align these scans in GeoMagic, um, since in our experience, GeoMagic tends to align scans better. Uh, and then we merge these aligned scans using the David Scanner software because we find that that merges um, scans better. Uh, and then for photogrammetry, we followed the general protocol, which I recently published with colleagues uh, in Advances in Archaeological Practice. Um, so to capture our images, we used a Sony RX103 compact digital camera. Uh, models in Agisoft were processed on high for photo alignment and the dense cloud stages um, of processing. And then finally, to make things more comparable, uh, in the end, models from both of these uh, types of method were decimated to approximately 500,000 polygons. Okay, so here are our initial results from the test flake. We're going to take a much closer look at these uh, in the following slides. Um, if you would also like an even closer look in 3D, we've put some of these models up online for viewing on sketchfab.com, uh, which I think the URL will be up uh, shortly, and we're going to try to get more models up there uh, a bit later. Okay, so here's our first group of scans. Um, and to highlight the details, we've uh, displayed these using the curvature mode in Geomagic Design X. Um, so the red is more convex, the blue is more concave, and this kind of lets you see the amount of noise uh, on your 3D scan. Um, so the first scan in the upper left corner was done on a clean flake, uh, and we sort of took out all sorts of data culling cleaning. Uh, in this case, and you can see we got something that vaguely resembles a flake, but I wouldn't say it's the most uh, useful scan. Um, and uh, next, we raised these kind of quality measures, and we got a nice scan of putty, um, which also is limited in its use. Um, and so uh, for photogrammetry on the clean flake, we got something. But again, it's uh, very noisy, and there's a large hole in the top. Um, talc dust with the structured light scanner also didn't work too well. But actually, surprisingly, a bit to us, um, the talc dust on the obsidian combined with structure from motion uh, in Agisoft actually produced something quite good. Um, so this looks like what you would want a scan of a flake to look like. Um, it's got smooth surfaces, sharp ridges, and you can even see some surface details uh, such as lancets. Um, so we eliminated those. Um, in our next set of scans, we have two different thicknesses of developer and chalk spray. Uh, so for structured light, we found that a coating of these sprays um, that was fairly light didn't really, it worked okay, but you can see there's still uh, a lot of surface noise. Um, heavier, heavier coatings, however, did produce um, better models. Uh, and then for photogrammetry, we did not see a significant difference. Um, so to keep things simple, we decided to stick with 
only the heavy coatings um, for both of these. And then finally, we have dulling spray and foot spray. Um, dulling spray did not work too well with photogrammetry. Um, however, he heavy application of dulling spray did seem to work with the structured light scanner. Uh, as for the foot spray, I, it sort of worked. We were a little surprised. Um, but we decided not to move on with that, mainly because we weren't sure what the medicated properties would do to stuff. Uh, and also, um, it felt like just by volume, we used like a third of the can to spray this, so it didn't seem most the most efficient uh, option. OK. So in summary, these were the uh, options we chose to move on with. All right, uh, so here are the results for this thin, transparent blade. Um, we found that all of these models are a fairly good representation of the overall geometry of the object. And these are up on uh, Sketchfab, if you would like to see them. Uh, and basically, um, the one thing is we found that the chalk spray model was relatively uh, a bit noisy, um, especially on the model derived from photogrammetry. Um, here is our core results. Um, aside for some slight uh, trouble with the dulling spray over here, where we have some um, missing data, uh, again, these are fairly all pretty OK. Um, Though, if we take uh, a bit of a closer look, um, we can see that there are some differences that are a bit more apparent. Um, specifically, the structured light model created with developer spray, and this was the same with chalk spray, seems a lot more rounded. Um, you're losing out on some of those details. Uh, things are a bit sharper with the dulling spray model, um, but at the same time, we ended up with a hole using the standard settings. Um, however, the photogrammetric model done with the talc dust has a lot of details, and again, these appear sharper. Um, so finishing off our scans, we have this projectile point. Uh, again, we have this same pattern where the chalk spray model is noisier, and we see dulling on the edges of the structured light scan. Um, you can see sort of on the edges, uh, they're less sort of red, which means convex and thick, and or, I'm sorry, sharp. Um, but in this case, we didn't get any holes, and the dulling spray model actually looks quite good. Um, some other things to consider with these coatings, of course. Uh, all of them are removable, we found. So talc dust was the easiest to remove, and that's probably because there's no chemical intended to bond that uh, powder. Um, and uh, we did find, though, that mechanical aid of some type was necessary to completely remove these coatings. Um, so we used a soft bristled toothbrush. If you're extremely concerned, for example, about use wear, um, you could try like a soft sponge, perhaps. Um, because these coatings are removable, though, you obviously can't handle these objects after the coating has been applied, or it'll just completely wipe off, and you'll have problems with your scan. Um, also, it's very important to note that developer spray Chalk spray and dulling spray all contain chemicals such as acetone, which can be damaging, especially to things like artifact labels. Um, it will completely remove, for example, India ink labels. Um, and here on the right, uh, you can see this is a label of an experimental object. Uh, and the developer spray has sort of eaten into that label and left little talc particles. So not so ideal. Um, the next issue is model texture. So here's all those initial test flake scans. Um, you can see our white balance was off for some of the structured light scans, but more importantly, uh, a bunch of these flakes are white and spotty, which is not how they normally look. Um, so what do you do if you want more accurate model texture? Uh, the first option is dulling spray with the structured light scanner. Um, and this does a pretty OK job. You can see some surface details that aren't evident um, in the untextured scan. Uh, and then the other option was to do a two-stage um, solution with Photogrammetry, so you take one set of photos with the clean object. We used a polarizer to help get rid of some shine. Do another set of photos with the coated object, and then use the coated photos to create the geometry and the uncoated photos uh, to create the texture. And this actually works quite well, and you get a nice sort of more photorealistic scan. Um, so in sum, uh, for these coatings, uh, structured light scanning, we would suggest developer or dulling spray, photogrammetry, try talc spray or a developer spray. Um, but that being said, talc dust and photogrammetry seems to produce the best results with the lowest impact on artifacts. 
Um, and then this just shows, right, that chalk spray is, creates sort of a fuzzy texture uh, on the object, which then shows up in um, your model. So we specifically used Montana brand chalk spray. We can't be sure this is the same with all chalk sprays, um, but it's a little dangerous. So not dangerous, not ideal. Um, so finally, we want to do, discuss the use of RTI uh, on obsidian artifacts. Um, so this has come up before. So RTI is done by taking a series of photographs, right, from a stable camera position with lighting coming from different angles. Uh, and then the RTI builder software uses these uh, images to compute surface normals for each pixel, uh, which you can use to produce a number of different types of visualizations. Um, so here's an obsidian point you can see uh, in the upper right hand corner of this slide. Um, but what we thought was interesting is this idea that it's actually possible to derive 3D reconstructions from RTI. Um, so this is an example uh, that our co-author Lezik Pavlovich uh, produced and presented um, last year in 2015 uh, at his SAA conference paper. Um, so in general terms, uh, the way this works is that we know the surface normals, we know the surface has to be continuous, uh, so mathematically we attempt to fit a surface based on those constraints. Um, and some corrections may also be applied to deal with things like non-uniformity of light distribution mm -hmm. and inaccuracies uh, in the calculation of lighting <laughs> angle. Um, so we did RTI. Uh, here I'm going to present it on our um, projectile point. And you can see in the lower right hand corner that normals uh, visualiza visualization. Um, so on the left is an image uh, we created in Photoshop based on that normals visualization. And on the right is our 3D model as viewed in um, Geomagic. And it looks quite good. Uh, so there's small details such as scratches. You also get visible um, use-related things such as pitting, um, which is quite astounding. And these are not details uh, that we would normally expect to find from a 3D model created with any sort of relatively affordable methodology. Uh, unfortunately, however, despite all of these great details, it's not actually an accurate representation of the overall morphology of the point's surface. Um, so in this slide, you can see a comparison of the RTI-derived model on the left and our structured light scan on the right, and clearly these don't uh, quite match. So the question then becomes, how do we correct for this distortion? Um, we didn't quite get much further than that, uh, though it looks like there was an sub uh, abstract submitted by some of the folks at Cultural Heritage Imaging for a session yesterday on combining RTI and photogrammetry. Uh, unfortunately, it seems like that talk was canceled, so um, we're very excited to see what they eventually uh, put out from that, because that would be really great. Um, okay, so conclusions. Uh, long story short, it's possible to make high-quality scans of obsidian artifacts with photorealistic textures. Um, and for now, we can achieve this by coding artifacts, but moving on in the future, it's bright and it likely uh, lies in the development of new methods or perhaps uh, refining combinations of these methods such as structured light scanning, photogrammetry, and RTI. Okay, so that's what I've got for you today. Um, again, we have some more resources available uh, at these following places. So um, some of the models are in Sketchfab. Uh, Legic's website is rtimage.us. Um, and I've got some assorted other things on my website uh, as well. And then thanks to all these great people and organizations. Right.